hello and welcome in this tutorial i'm going to explain this quiz question that i have given there in my c course on udemy the title of the course as you can see here is c programming step by step from beginner to advanced level that's a popular course on udemy and you can get the link of the course in the description one of my student on udemy has asked me this question in the question answer forum to explain this quiz so i'm creating this video for that now, if you are asked to find out the output of any code segment, then the best way to do that is to execute the code step by step using pen and paper. That's what we call dry running of the program. So this is the program segment that's given there and the question asked to find out the output. So we have a variable here s that is initialized with zero at the beginning before starting the loop. And finally, this prints the content of s so we need to find out what's going to be printed as the content of s after executing this uh, nested loop there so let's go ahead and do that uh, i'll just do the try run step by step and that will help you to understand what's going on in this loop okay so i have copied the code here on my code blocks ide let me now go ahead and explain this code step by step so that you can understand it clearly what's going on there and finally we're going to deduce the output of this program so we have these two variables i that is initialized with one and s that is initialized with zero prior starting this while loop now we have a nested loop there the outer loop is the while loop and the inner loop is this for loop now you can see that the outer loop clearly iterates five times there starting from i equals one it's going to go as long as i is less than equals 5 and on each iteration it's incrementing the value of i by 1. So it should be 5 times the outer loop is going to iterate, isn't it? So this is the scope of the outer loop and this is the scope of the inner loop. Now on the first iteration of the outer loop we have the value of i as 1. We start with that. Then after entering into the outer loop we have this inner loop that's a for loop and there we have this j as the loop counter that is initialized with the value of i so j is going to have the value of i now the condition here is that j greater than equals one so currently the value of j is one so one greater than equals one that is true we are going to go inside of that for loop and there we find this if statement now here in this if we are testing whether j is even or not you can see that we are testing like this j mod 2 equals 0 now j mod 2 is going to be 0 when j is even otherwise it's going to be 1 so now what's the value of j right now it's 1 isn't it so 1 mod 2 that's not 0 that's 1 because 1 is odd number so this condition is false we are going to come here in the else part and there we are performing this statement s plus equals j that is actually s equals s plus j now what is the current value of s that is 0 and what is the current value of j that is 1 so we are adding 0 with 1 the result is 1 that we are assigning to s so s is going to be updated with 1 now we have that break statement so we break the inner loop now when we have the break statement within the inner loop it's going to break the inner loop it's not going to break out of the outer loop so it's going to break the inner loop and it's going to come here and it will find that plus plus i there it's not going to break outside of the outer loop here that's not going to happen okay so please remember this whenever you have nested loops and you have a break statement within the inner loop it's only going to break the inner loop it's not going to break the outer loop okay so now we break the inner loop and we come here and find that plus plus i so the value of i is going to be incremented to 2 so earlier it was 1 now it will become 2 we iterate back in the while 2 less than equals 5 that's true you're going to go inside of the while loop for the second time so this is second iteration when the value of i is 2 so here in the for loop j will be assigned with the value of i which is 2 right now so j will become 2 as well don't forget the value of s which is 1 right now okay so the value of j is 2 2 greater than equals 1 that's true so we are having this if statement now inside of that inner for and 2 mod 2 is that 0 yes it is 2 is even number so this condition is true so here we're going to perform this statement 
is minus equals i this time it's going to happen there now it's actually going to subtract i from the current value of s and it's going to assign the result to s itself so s minus equals i means s equals s minus i current value of s if you recall it's one so one what's the value of i right now that's two so it's going to become minus one and that we are assigning to s so the value of s now will become minus one so we have this continuous statement next to that uh, expression now the continue is going to take the control to the modifier section straight away here now there we have that minus minus j so the value of j is going to be decremented to 1 right now j is 2 so it's going to be decremented to 1 let me delete that let me erase the previous values so that we do not get any confusion out there okay so let me delete all these things so we have the value of j right now 1 now 1 greater than equals 1 that is true and we go inside of the inner for loop we find this if if statement once again now 1 mod 2 that's not 0 1 is odd number so we come to the else part and there we find this statement s equals s plus j now what's the current value of s that's minus 1 so minus 1 plus what's the value of j right now that's 1 plus 1 okay so minus 1 plus 1 that's going to yield 0 that's that's going to be assigned to s so right now the value of s is going to become 0 now we are breaking the loop so we come out of that inner loop which is the for loop and then we find this plus plus i once again that's going to increment the value of i to 3 let me erase all these values okay so now the value of i is 3 3 less than equals 5 that is true we are going to go inside of that while loop for the third time so we start with j equals 3 now 3 greater than equals 1 that is true we are going to go inside of the inner for loop we find this statement again that if checking again now 3 is odd number so 3 mod 2 equals equals 0 no that is not true we come to the else part and there we find this statement again s equals s plus j what's the value of s right now that's 0 what's the value of j right now that's 3 so 0 plus 3 is 3 3 is going to be assigned to s so the value of s will become 3 now immediately after that we are going to break the loop with that break keyword so we come here and we are going to increment the value of i by 1 once again so now the value of i will be 4 after this so the value of i is 4 now don't forget that the value of s is 3 so the value of i is 4 we are coming here we are testing this condition is true 4 less than equals 5 we are going to go inside of the while loop we find that 4 once again where the value of i is assigned to j so j will be 4 4 greater than equals 1 that is true we go inside of the 4 and then we find the if once again now 4 is even number so this condition is going to become true now we are going to perform this one s minus equals i that means s equals s minus i what's the current value of s that's 3 what's the current value of i that is 4 so 3 minus 4 that's going to be minus 1 and that we are assigning to s so the value of s is minus 1 right now it's no longer 3 okay now we have that continuous statement we go here now the value of j is going to be decremented by 1 so j will become 3 3 greater than equals 1 that is true we are going to go inside of the for loop once again now 3 is indeed odd number so 3 mod 2 is that 0 no that's not that's 1 so we come here in the else part we have this statement that's going to be executed s plus equals j now we are going to add j with s what's the current value of s that's minus 1 what's the current value of j that's actually 3 okay minus 1 plus 3 that's going to yield 2 plus 2 that's we are that's going to be assigned to s so the value of s uh, going to be plus 2 after this so let me delete all other operations there so that we do not get confused going on with this deduction now we break the loop immediately after doing that immediately after updating s to 2 we break the loop we come here now the value of i is going to be incremented to 5 earlier it was 4 if you can remember so the value of i is going to become 5 we iterate back 5 less than equals 5 in the while condition that's true so 
here i is 5. So we are going to enter into that while loop for the fifth time. Let me delete all these things, okay? All these uh, annotations on the screen. So now we start with i equals 5. And don't forget that the current value of s is actually 2. So i equals 5 here. So we start j with 5. That's an odd number. So this condition is going to become false. 5 mod 2 is 1. We come here in the else part. Now this is going to happen. Okay, s equals s plus j. What's the current value of s? That's 2. What's the current value of j? That's 5. So we get 7. That is assigned to s. So s is updated to 7. Don't forget this. Now we are breaking the loop. We are coming here. The value of i will be 6. We iterate back in the while condition. 6 less than equals 5. That is false. So the while loop gets terminated. We come out of the while. We print the content of s which is going to be 7. So the final output that we get out there is uh, s equals 7. Now if I go ahead and execute this program, we're going to get that value um, as the output. Let me do that. Let me run this program. Okay, you can see that the value of s is 7 there. So what we did with the dry run was correct. Okay, so that is the way by which you can find out what should be the output of a code segment. Dry running the code is the best way for doing this. Okay, so here in the quiz, we have this option, the second one, s equals 7. That's the correct option. I hope you have understood this clearly now. Thank you for watching this.